The Bucks are one step closer to a title and signing Giannis Antetokounmpo to the Supermax. Monday's moves were a win for Milwaukee, but was it a big win? This video breaks down the winners and losers and says how much better the Bucks are today. Hey, it's Casey. Welcome to AM Hoops. Hit subscribe, hit notification bells because we're dropping five videos per week, always at 9 a.m. Eastern, usually about the biggest NBA topic. But on days like this, when we have breaking news, we will drop two videos per day. You're welcome. This is an insane week. We've got trades. We've got free agency on Friday. We have the draft on Wednesday, but a big trade on Monday. And our first winner is the 2021 Bucks. Next year's Bucks will have one of the best starting fives in the East. Drew Holiday, Bogdan Bogdanovich, Chris Middleton, Giannis, and Brooke Lopez. That team is great offensively and defensively like last year, but now they have more playoff potential. The trade for Holiday was Eric Bledsoe, George Hill, three first round picks and two pick swaps. Damn, more like Drew Holiday, am I right? That is a huge overpay for a non-star on the last year of his deal. This is more, though, about keeping Giannis happy. Drew is an upgrade over Bledsoe on catch-and-shoot threes, playmaking, and defense, and Bled is a good defender. The real test will be the postseason, of course. Bledsoe failed year after year in the biggest games. Drew has been to the playoffs four times in 11 years, winning just two playoff series but playing well. This is definitely a gamble, but next year's Bucks are better. Bogdanovich is one of the best three-point shooters in the NBA. Since the idea is to surround Giannis with shooters to make teams pay in the playoffs, it's easy to see how they're a lot better. The sign and trade with the Kings was Dante DiVincenzo, Irsan Ilyasova, and DJ Wilson for Bogdanovich. Because it's a sign and trade, the Bucks can't do any more deals this year, even at the deadline. The Serbian hit 37% of his threes last season, 41% on catch and shoot, which is huge. He can also defend and play make. Bogdanovich, though, has never been to the playoffs. Another winner, Giannis Antetokounmpo. He made it clear, get me help. Giannis is eligible to sign a five-year Supermax deal with Milwaukee worth 228 million bucks. If he doesn't sign it, this could be his last year in Milwaukee. Teams like the Warriors or the Heat love to hear that, but the Bucks have heard the same message from Giannis all along. This week, he told a reporter this about staying in Milwaukee. Quote, I don't know what the plan is. It depends on what decisions they make. If they make the right decisions, I'll be there for many years. If they do not, we'll see. The NBA is business and we take it day by day. Hopefully we can succeed together. Translation, get me help. And that's exactly what the Bucks did on Monday. And some people will say, okay, this definitely means that Giannis is signing the Supermax. In fact, the New York Times tweeted this. The last two weeks have been filled with chatter that Giannis Antetokounmpo indeed plans to sign his five-year Supermax with the Bucks before the December 21st deadline. The Bucks just made a trade that suggests they must believe it. If that's true, then mission accomplished for this Bucks front office. But our first loser, the future Milwaukee Bucks. I don't believe this makes Milwaukee a championship team. Yes, Drew Holiday and Bogdanovich are upgrades, but they're not stars. And that is what wins in this league. Look at the last finals. Who won? The team with two superstars, not the team with depth. Holiday and Bogdanovich are B to B plus players. The fact still remains, Chris Middleton is the second best buck. Next year, the Miami Heat will be a year older with more experience. Obviously, the Boston Celtics are still threats. The Brooklyn Nets are gonna have Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, whoever they trade for, or depth. Now, I'm not saying I blame the Bucks front office. I think this was the best they could do. I mean, earlier this week, they tried to trade for Dennis Schroeder, and OKC didn't want Eric Bledsoe, right? So they must have scrambled and said, okay, we're gonna pay whatever it takes, and they got Drew Holiday. This was the best they could do. They couldn't get, say, Bradley Beal. He's the biggest name on the market, but the Wizards are not gonna trade him before the season. If this blows up in their face, which I think it will, then the Bucks have no future. 
Giannis could leave. Drew Holiday is on the last year of his deal. They traded their best young player, DiVincenzo, and most of their future draft capital. And Giannis signing the Supermax doesn't mean he will stay. The rule is that a player can't be traded for one year after signing. So if he does sign, that means he can still demand a trade and be the biggest trade chip we've ever seen. They would get a historic package in return for Giannis, but don't be fooled if he signs. Our next winner, the New Orleans Pelicans. Okay, the Pels and the Thunder own the NBA draft the next six years. New Orleans got three Bucks first rounders. They've got three from the Lakers, from the Anthony Davis deal. New Orleans front office guy David Griffin knew the Bucks were in a tight spot and fleeced them. Here's a look at what I predicted this trade would be a few weeks ago. Bledsoe, DiVincenzo, Ilyasova, and one first round pick. Okay, we can call DiVincenzo worth a first rounder, but even still, the Pels got an additional pick plus two pick swaps? That's crazy. So our next loser is any team now trying to trade for a legit star. The price of an actual star just went way up. I take a lot of heat from commenters when I include like six picks in a trade. That's a real thing now. Drew Holiday went for three picks and two pick swaps. Paul George, five first round picks and two swaps. What will James Harden go for? Six first round picks at least. That is why I think the most likely team to trade for Harden is the Brooklyn Nets. The Nets have everything you need for a big trade. They've got all their future first, they've got talented young players and talented vets. A package including Karis LeVert, Jared Allen, Spencer Dinwiddie, and first round picks is the best Houston can do. The Sixers do want Harden, but they don't own as many picks. They can offer Ben Simmons or Joel Embiid, but I'm not sure that Houston is trying to win now. On Monday, the Rockets sent Robert Covington to the Blazers for two first round picks. Rocco is a win now vet. That trade signals a teardown. The Drew Holiday deal tells me the Rockets can get at least six first round picks for James Harden. So Brooklyn must have hated to see how much Milwaukee gave up for a B plus player. Our final winner, the Sacramento Kings. And this may be a surprise, but I actually like what the Kings did. Bogdanovich is already 28 years old. By the time his new deal ends, DiVincenzo could actually be the better player. With Bogdanovich out, Buddy Heald will get a lot more playing time. Heald was supposedly on the trading block, but this could make him want to stay. Sacramento also saves a ton of money here because DiVincenzo is still on his rookie deal, making only about three million bucks a year. Look, I really like this deal for the Bucks, but people need to settle down. I don't think Drew Holiday or Bogdanovich make the Bucks a title favorite. They did the best they could do, but it's not good enough. Support AM Hoops and click subscribe. Don't miss a daily NBA video.